All right, folks, so this is kind of the introduction video to uh, the techniques that we're gonna talk about today uh, for our professional development, uh, if you're choosing to do that with me today. Uh, so if you don't know me, I'm Sean Manning. I'm the South Middle art teacher um, and uh, sort of partially professional illustrator on the side. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> What we're going to be talking about today is my alcohol marker and pen and ink technique that I've developed over time uh, in my um, art endeavors, if you will. Uh, so what I've got here is uh, some Blick Studio markers. I believe you guys got some purchased for you. I'm not sure what the sets are exactly, but I've got uh, the full set of uh, 144 markers. Uh, that I use for my professional um, kind of gig and uh, I've donated a set to my own building. Uh, I bought a set a couple years ago and uh, now I'm using those in my classroom for my kids and uh, I've got my own brand new set so for home. So anyway, uh, Blick Studio markers, can't speak enough about them. Uh, brush tip on one side, chisel tip on the other. Um, in my opinion, worth every bang for their buck um, and as good as a Copic marker. Uh, I do use some Copic markers, um, but primarily I use these for most of my illustration work that I do. So anyway, on to, you know, the, uh, the important stuff. Like as far as like a drawing goes um, for under what your kids might be working on. So like a lot of kids think that the order that you should go in is like a comic book order when you're doing an alcohol marker drawing. And um, you may not know because you may have never done these before, but if you do these in the order of like a comic book where you draw it, because it's a graphic style, so I use comics to kind of express this. But if you draw it first, which is fine, and then you ink it second, going over the ink with an alcohol marker can cause a lot of headaches and a lot of sad faces. Um, because I have yet to run through a illustration marker that doesn't smear in some way or another. Like, they've got kinds out there that say, oh, these don't smear with alcohol. Yes, they do. They all smear with alcohol markers, depending on which type of marker you use, which color of marker you use, they all smear. So don't buy, go out there and buy special ones that say they don't smear with alcohol marker, because they all do. So my solution to that is instead of doing a drawing and then an inking and then a color over top of it, I draw and then erase and then marker and then ink over top of that. So I do it in a reverse order, sort of. And the first thing I wanna to talk to you today about is the drawing. So the prepping of the surface and the drawing. So this that I'm working on, what I normally do most of my commission work on is illustration board. So this is like a, like a 16 ply um, illustration board. It's, it's Dick Blick brand. I love Dick Blick. Obviously I'm, you know, I'm like a walking advertisement for him. But uh, Dick Blick brand illustration board, it's smooth surface, it's like a Bristol board surface. It's not Bristol board, but it's really, really close. So like, um, as far as that goes, like, I'll talk more about the surfaces later, but I like this surface because it's kind of soft, and when I draw my pencil lines into them, they actually indent a little bit, and we'll use that later in the technique. But basically, when I do a drawing like this, um, you know, to, to, to have an illustration on my site, because this is not any kind of actual illustration that I've got, but I will sketch out with an HB pencil first, sort of the generalities of whatever it may be. So I'm not gonna get into what the drawing process is in this video. We're not going into shapes and proportions and forms and all that business. Um, we're just gonna start with the drawing, but then I'll, I'll, I'll start with, a, you know, some sort of proportional thing and, and kind of giving me a general idea about where everything's at. You can kind of see I'm, I'm, I'm sort of showing a small illustration of the way that I would have done this. Um, anyway, so something like that. So then I go through that and then what I do, um, which a lot of people don't like know about per se, is I will then go over 
my final line work with a 4H pencil. So my 4H pencil, I use a lead holder and a 4H lead, so that's a super hard lead. Um, obviously you guys, hopefully you know the, the differences between your pencil leads and stuff, but an H is gonna be an extremely hard lead and it draws a very light line. So I, what I do is I'll go over this with a second layer. Uh, say I was wanting to um, begin to add in the little details and things like this, so I would begin to sketch in those little details very lightly and then when I'm happy with the way that the whole drawing looks, the general gesture of the whole drawing, then I'll go back in and I'll press super hard and I'm gonna just do one line here, but I would press super hard and I would go back into it uh, with the final line work. So what you see here is the final line work. Then I go back in and erase the whole thing and you can see that that final line is what stays. You can see a little bit of my H pencil that's left, but all of that HB is gone. And then you can kind of go back in and I can make that as light as this. So um, the process of drawing whatnot, it ends with a 4H pencil and it ends with me then going back in and over it and erasing as much of that 4H pencil as possible so that I can go in and color with my marker. Now let me explain that real quick, okay? So prepping the surface, getting everything ready, the drawing, everything. So the coloring of the marker, the reason that you wanna get that surface as clean as possible is the graphite's gonna do two things to your marker tip. Graphite is gonna cover your marker tip and it's gonna smear with the marker. Bad news bears, we don't want that. And then secondly, graphite's actually going to coat the marker tip and it's gonna stop your, um, your ink, whatever soluble ink you've got, these are alcohol markers. So it's gonna stop that from flowing smoothly. So when you get it covered with graphite, that's a big problem and they're very difficult to clean off, okay? So you always wanna make sure that you've got your surface prepped and ready to roll and that it is like pristine and before you start coloring. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so. You know, I know at this point you may not have a drawing prepped or anything like that, so it might be time, you know, pause the video and take a couple minutes and, and, and you know, draw out something, you know, a cylinder or, you know, whatever, maybe maybe it's a stack of, of objects, maybe you want to do a Dragon Ball Z character, I don't know, that's your call. So maybe you want to sketch something out real quick, and then uh, we'll turn the video back on after this point, we'll have a quick discussion and we'll turn the video back on and then uh, uh, I will start to talk about the actual marker technique. So, sweet. Okay guys, so here's my drawing table um, and my notes there for the video. But then you got over here, these are my inking pins and my drawing pins. I know that looks like a hot mess, but uh, that's kind of what I got. So that's right on, this is my drawing crane or my, my video crane uh, that I'm gonna set the phone in on a second, but I wanted to show you guys the markers, okay? So these are the Blick Studio markers that I have. Um, this is set, part of set one, and then set two below. So that's the 144 set with some extras in there also that are some older markers that I had. Um, this is the, the ones that I have for my classroom, uh, or obviously in my classroom right now. So uh, that's kind of what the set is, and then you can buy these bins they're really cheap, they're you know, $20 for a bin, and they hold the markers great. They work for all sorts of different markers, um, all kinds of different things. So, um, yeah, that's that's my setup, uh, basically. So here we go, so we're on, I gotta make sure the screen's good. All right, screen looks good. Um, <clears throat> so, talking about marker technique, yeah. So, marker technique. Um, I, I, I really dig talking about this stuff, so. Um, if I get boring, uh, you know, don't tell me, <laughs> right? So I dig it. Um, anyway, marker technique, uh, basically what I want to handle today in the video is I want to talk about how we're going to do uh, part of his jumpsuit. So like, and we can do the grays and stuff with the gloves. So this jumpsuit that he's wearing is blue and then his glove is white. So... <clears throat> when we're coloring stuff like that, 
Um, excuse me, I got a little bit of a cold. Um, but uh, when we're handling stuff like that, uh, we can do all sorts of different techniques and have a little fun with it. Uh, but the first thing that I want to do, anytime I want to use a color, and I don't have them here, but I'm going to bring them with me when we do our little uh, talk, um, is my, my color sheets. So I have these color sheets that have every one of my colors, a sample of every one of my colors colored on it so I can see what they look like. And um, I don't have to like guess, so this is just like a total guess as to what um, colors I may want to use for this particular uh, picture. But I'm gonna try to find, yeah, these two right here. These two colors go pretty nicely together. So we've got um, 566 Lake Placid and 567 Dark Blue Gray. They don't always line up like that as far as colors go, but this one just so happened to. So like um, we kind of already talked about the illustration board versus the Bristol board. One of the reasons that I like the illustration board over just regular Bristol is I can get it in really big pieces and I can cut it to whatever size I need to cut it to, okay? So like if I need a 18 by 24, you know, a guy orders me an 18 by 24, I can get that. If a guy orders me a 40 by 30, that's the size that they come in is 40 by 30. So I can get that, and yeah, I've done some big ones like that in marker. So those are take a really long time and they're very expensive to buy, but people do order them from time to time. So um, to be able to have the adjustable size in them is, is just great. So that's one of the, the, the perks of the illustration. Plus it's got a primered surface on it, and that primered surface allows the paper to absorb the marker just enough, but still it doesn't like, it's not like a sponge. So when I use the marker, I'm not losing a bunch of marker to the, to the paper, okay? So sometimes you can do that like with papers, you can lose a bunch of marker to it. So that's why I don't recommend like, um, not necessarily regular Bristol, but like thicker Bristol, like that stuff's really spongy and it takes a lot of your ink. I also don't like marker paper. So this is another thing. So like with marker paper, um, I don't use marker, it's too slick. The marker doesn't have anything to grab onto. So like you'll, you'll make a mark and then if it doesn't dry like instantly, you could smudge it and smear it. And I hate that, I can't stand that. So I don't use marker paper. So I've had people ask me about marker paper in the past it kind of drives me bonkers. Um, I don't really use it. So if you're if you're going to invest in something for your students, this the Blick Student Illustration Board, which is what this is, it's like six dollars for a forty by thirty. You can cut it into eight and a half by elevens, and, and it'll last you a long time. Okay. So anyway, back to that. So that's my surface preparation and my my uh, uh, talk about the the paper and stuff last time. So. Um, so now I got the chisel tip out. So here's the studio marker, we're ready to roll. Let's start coloring. Here's the chisel tip. With my type of illustrations that I do, a lot of it is very hard edge stuff. So like when you look at something like this, like we're just gonna pick a light direction. So let's say our light is shining down from here. So he's got these three sections that would be musculature um, in the thing. Obviously on the lower side of the section or object, we would have this dark shadow. Now I like, with this type of illustration, I have a really hard edge. Okay, so that's gonna be where it's at. So you'll notice, you can kind of see in the video, as it goes down, it doesn't leave it super streaky. So that's a really a good bonus with the, uh, with the uh, illustration board. It doesn't leave it super streaky. It leaves it nice and, and kind of even. And then as far as like, adding shadows, and a lot of people like to plan their shadows out and stuff like that. I can just kind of, at this point in my career, I just kind of see them and I know where they go, and and um, I don't stress too much about major shadows and and or like laying out my major shadows. At this point, I just kind of eyeball them and see where I want them to go, and then I put them in. You gotta be kind of bold and have a lot of practice in this to do this. So I'm using little circular strokes right now, which shows, it helps to not show the directionality of the coloring, and sometimes that can be an issue with marker. So I'm gonna put on, when I, when I do my marker technique, I'm always gonna put my shadow color first. 
okay? So that's like the most important thing is I'm gonna put my shadow color first and then I'm gonna put my light color over the shadow, okay? So I'm gonna blend this out. And one of the things that I'm actually looking for here is like a three value scale in my markers. So we're gonna have basically a white, if you will, a white and then a base color and then a shadow color. So that would be like white, gray, black as far as your three values go. Um, when you're doing a, a illustrative kind of deal like this, that's what you want. Um, so white, gray, black. Uh, what I want to do here now is I'm not going to have white. It's not going to stay white. But all I'm going to do now is get my second color and I'm going to begin to add that second color in. And I'm also going to color that over where those overlap, okay? And it's gonna soften that edge a little bit. You can see in the video, hopefully, you can see how that has softened quite a bit. And I can almost blend it through. This is why I like to do the light color second. Because some people will do the light color first and then the shadow color second, and then they go in with a blender, okay? So here's another place where if you've got any alcohol marker experience, um, this is where I differ from the normal crowd. So again, I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna work on that hard edge a little bit, and I'm just gonna soften it enough, there we go, to kind of blend in. Um, to blend or not to blend, that is the question. Um, I, started when I first started using alcohol markers I started using blenders um, that was the thing like you got to have a blender you got to be able to blend it and then as I got better and better with them I realized that a blender did nothing more than dilute the ink that was on there so what was happening is if I wanted to blend between two colors I was getting this beautiful rich color and then it would lighten and lighten and then go back to a beautiful rich color. So it ended up looking almost like a false shadow or excuse me, a false highlight in my images. So instead, what I started doing in lieu of blending is using that light color as my blender color. Okay, now what I'm doing here is another trick. I'm oversaturating my very, very dark shadow area with a second layer of the dark color and it's gonna act as a shadow, a shadow shadow. So what I'm getting there, if you can kind of see this in the video, and I'm hoping it's showing up pretty good, I think it is. But if you can see, I can kind of zoom in a little bit. Um, we're getting like, you've got the white color, and then you've got the original base color, then you've got that blender area color, and then you've got your shadows, okay? You can see it really good down here. You've got, and I gotta make sure you can see this, so let me move my camera. We've got our light, base, blended area, deep shadow. So we got four values in there, which is just awesome. Like I love the fact that I've got four values there. That's great. So um, that's kind of the base technique that I'm gonna work with. Now I just wanna find a little bit lighter of a color and I'm gonna grab that lighter color. Let me check this. Ooh, that one's been used a lot. Might need to fix that. But I'm gonna grab this lighter color and I'm gonna go over, check this push technique out, how about that? So I grip the pencil like a claw and then I push it through. So now I'm gonna grab this lighter color and I'm gonna get like a, like a little baby highlight. And the one thing I will tell you about alcohol markers, and I don't care who you talk to about this, this is a fact, Jack. So this marker will always fade. Whenever I finish a picture, within one day of finishing a picture, I photograph it immediately. And I normally sell prints of them if it isn't going to somebody who bought it as a commission. Because this color is always going to fade. It's gonna get lighter, than what it is. So as intense and as bright as that color is right now, it's going to get lighter as you work it, okay? So that's the bluish area, and you would handle all areas in this image like that. So this whole jumpsuit here is blue, and uh, he's got, there's a bit of a blue leg there, and all that. So uh, a lot of this, this is all yellow and stuff. So I'm gonna finish this picture 
for the second part of this video um, so you guys can see what it looks like finished. But right now, I just wanna move on and I wanna talk about grays for a second. So I've got a ton of grays in here also. So this set comes with a ton of grays, but one of the things that's really super duper important about that set of grays is that, um, gotta find the right color, here we go, is that you don't overdo them. So I've got a color here called Antique White. This is one of my favorite colors like in the stack, Antique White. I just love this color. And it goes on as sort of a yellowy color, but it fades nicely into a, just a kind of a very light sepia tone. So I'm gonna tone this whole thing, right? So anytime I do whites, I don't always use Antique White, but a lot of the times I do. And then I'm gonna go in here to my warm colors. I've got warm gray 30% right here is the one I'm going to start with. So that's 0, 55, warm gray 50% or 30%. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to look again at that shadow layer. Where is it going to be shadow if my light's from above? And I'm going to start to add in that shadow stuff. Okay, so I've got a little bit of shadow added in there. I'm going to have a little bit here. I'm going to have it on this side here here, there, and then a little bit in the palm. Okay, so I might go just a little bit there. And then finally, I'm trying to think what I wanna do the knuckles, probably not. I think I'm gonna leave it there. So you see I got this nice sort of gray. Well, the grays are beautiful for toning and tinting things down. I just love them. So I use the chisel tip for that. Now I'm gonna go in here with the brush tip and I'm gonna to start to add, I got a little bit darker of a gray, and I'm gonna to start to add some very deep tones, some deep grays, okay? So this is all like some fine work that I'm doing with the brush tip. So I love the brush tip. So I'm even gonna go in and I'm gonna put some shadowing in these knuckle bins. But what I love most about this is if you do it right, we can get a reflective highlight on the knuckle there. So that's a pretty fun little deal right there. We're getting a nice reflective highlight going on there and it's looking pretty sassy. So the brush tips give me the, the ability to get detail without going bonkers. And they also give me the ability to cover large areas too very quickly, okay? So you can already see the way that this color is setting. It's already starting to change a little bit and we're getting this nice deep kind of color. Now, as far as like grays go, another thing that I like to use grays for, like if I did it here, is I like to use cold grays in my blues sometimes. If I want to achieve, this is cool gray 60%, watch this. I can go in here and I can add like a grayish highlight, like a reflective highlight in the bottom. And this is just gonna give my shading and my color a depth change. So it's just gonna make it look a little bit more interesting, okay? And anytime you go in with a gray, it's gonna saturate out like a blender does, like what I talked about happening with that false highlight with the blender. It does the same thing. And it just adds a nuance to the picture. So I use grays over top of my colors all the time to change the way the colors look. Okay, but then also in whites, you use gray quite a bit. Um, and then what I'll do, a little secret in the end, is I'll take a white colored pencil and I'll highlight some of this with a white colored pencil when it's all said and done with. But anyway, I'm gonna get back to coloring this whole thing so that when you guys, uh, when we catch back on to the last part of the video, you'll see this thing completely finished. I'm probably not gonna do the background right now, but uh, we'll get him all finished up so I can talk about my inking technique that I do over top of this. I got some pretty little secrets for you on those guys too. So, all right, cool. All right guys, so we got the uh, finished coloring done. You can see uh, there's a little bit of detail that's showing through because the line I got on here was nice and dark, but it kind of looks fuzzy in spots and in places like that. So this is where I would normally go over and do my inking in this process. So um, 
when I talk about inking, just kind of uh, to be clear on uh, terminology. When I talk about inking, what I'm talking about is I'm sorry for the uh, bell there. Uh, what I'm talking about is going over with a black line and finalizing the edge work, finalizing that, adding some areas of black uh, to the design to make it pop a little bit, um, stuff like that. So when I do the majority of my inking, I use a s whole series of tools. So let me tape this guy up here real quick, make sure it doesn't fall. Um, but I use a whole series of inking tools. So one of my biggest tools that I use is a Micron, okay? So everybody knows the Micron pens. This is an 05. It's probably the, the main size that I use is an 05, but I also use like a three and eight. And then from time to time, when I'm doing very small lines, I'll use a one. So I've got all that. But then I've also got some specialty inking pens. They're Pigmas, so they're made by the same company that makes Micron, but they're Pigmas, okay, and they're brush tips. So you can kind of see the tip on this. It's a soft, pliable nib, and when I, you can kind of see, well, maybe on my finger, it bends, and, it, and it's loaded with India ink, which I love, so it gives me a nice black, dark ink. There's a fine tip, there's a medium tip, so it's bigger, and then there's a bold tip. This one's very bold. It's a very big flexible end on it. So I use those depending on the areas of black that I need to fill in. And then I also use, uh, this is a Pentel sign pen, um, another nice uh, larger marking tool. Um, gives me a good black area when I need to fill that in. So I use all kinds of combinations of that. I've also used Copic multi-liners. Um, Copic multi-liners are cool. They're super expensive. So one, they're super expensive, and then two, they claim to not be um, spreadable by the marker. Like, they claim that it will not smear. That is not true. They smear, 100% they smear. Um, I, it's like I said in an earlier video. I have yet to find a marker, an inking marker, that doesn't smear with alcohol marker or water-based marker. I have yet to find it. That's why I do my inking last, okay? So uh, you can kind of see what we got right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start to ink uh, part of this. I'm gonna talk about large inking areas. We're not gonna do the whole thing because that would take probably, I could probably ink this picture in 20 minutes uh, if I was just set, just put my head down and started, started going to work. But um, I don't want to spend 20 minutes on this, you just watching me ink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it, or excuse me, I've already drawn it. I'm going to ink part of it. We're going to talk through that inking process. Then I'm going to cut the video, and then I'm going to, I'm going to attach it back, and I'm going to show you the finished thing. But I've got one little trick up my sleeve that I want to show you guys before I cut the video. So let's just do a little inking real quick. We'll do his ear, maybe his face, et cetera, et cetera. You guys can see how this really begins to pop. So one of the bonuses of using the softer paper and the harder lead is it gives me a channel that I can draw in. So you can see that line already is beginning to pop. So I've already got a pencil line that my pen wants to directly run into, okay? And that makes it easier for the inking process to happen. So my inking that I'm gonna do on a drawing like this, you can see that already helps that pop so much more. My inking is really just a series of outlines and then I'm gonna do some hatching, hatching marks and some cross hatching marks where I feel like it needs it. But with the hatching and cross hatching lines, it's really important that they're not obnoxious, okay? And what I mean by obnoxious is, if I'm working on a skin tone area, right? I don't wanna have a bunch of black lines per se, because that's gonna make the skin look like kind of dirty, the black line does. So I can use it as an outlining tool. I can use it for other purposes, but what I really want to do is I want to have it help me define where my stuff's at. So I might be in here, like define where my eyebrows are, but as far as hatching goes, 
and adding depth, I don't want to use this. So this is going to help me get that, that for this is a cartoony kind of look. Okay, so we got a little cartoony kind of look. A line I forgot to draw on here earlier. They have, there's like a line that runs right down here on these particular characters. So I'm going to redraw that line. You got to be kind of bold when you're inking. If you're not used to inking or the process of inking, it is a bold thing. Like you, you, you can't be scared to ink. Some kids get really scared to ink because they're afraid they're going to make a mistake. Okay. If you're afraid you're going to make a mistake, then this is not the art form for you because it's pretty permanent, you know? So if that's, if that's your situation and you're afraid, probably not the situation that you want to go for here. Now I'm just realizing as I do this that I forgot to color in his tongue, but that's okay. We'll do that later. Here's going to be my first area of black that I'm going to fill in, what's inside of his mouth. And anytime I'm going to have an area that's in darkness, like inside of the mouth, I will use my black to hatch. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to do some crisscross lines here. You guys all know what hatching and cross hatching is. So I'm just going to do some crisscross lines. I'm going to get tighter as I get to the back. So then it looks like it's retreating back into that area. Let's grab a quick light peach should work for the tongue. Hopefully I'm not going to get any smearing, but it looks like I'm going to get a little bit of smearing. It's okay. It's just going to look a little dirtier. No big deal. So we got that taken care of. So the mouth is done. Um, one of the things that you can do is draw, like with heroes, you don't necessarily draw teeth, but with villains you can. And this guy's a bad guy, so I'm gonna draw little teeth marks in. That's fine. Uh -huh. And then he's got this black M on his head. If you know anything about the character, then you'll know why he's got a black M on his head. But it's not necessarily important for the video process but it is important for the drawing process. This character is known as Majin Vegeta, and that's what that M stands for, is Majin. So here's our, more of our inking lines. You can see we're getting somewhere now with this. It's really beginning to pop. It's really beginning to look good, and that's what we're going for is this, this pop in in our image okay this pop in our image little shadow area there that i'm going to fill in um got a little bit here a little bit here okay so now all that being said technically i could be done with this at this point but one of the things that i like to do in my style and you guys are going to be familiar with these i think or, or sort of familiar with these um is i like to use colored pens and one of my favorite colored pens to use are Papermate flares. So I'm going to see if I can find in my stuff real quick a Papermate flare that might work really good for this process. I got a whole set of Papermate flares at home that just sit on my inking table and they're ready to roll. Here's a set. So here's a 24 pack of Papermate flares. Okay. And I'm gonna grab, I know which color I want. This is like a, it looks kind of orangey on the camera a little bit, but it's actually, you can see if I, if I get a piece of paper here, it's kind of a pinky skin tony color, okay? So I love this color here, and I love it for helping me get some hatching detail, so check it out. Around, these are veins in his head, these little alien looking things. So we would wanna, we would wanna ink those. So we're just gonna throw a quick ink on those. Fine line, not too dark, not too black. But we'll do that. And then we're gonna take, and in the shadow areas, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can really see it, okay? So there's the zoom in. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hatch with the colored pen. 
okay? And I'm gonna hatch with the colored pin. This is gonna extend the depth of the marker that I used. Cross hatch, like this. Cross hatch, cross hatch. A little hatching back here. This is gonna extend the depth of the marker that I use. And it's gonna give it an even more three-dimensional effect. I love the way this looks. I think it's cool. Um, it's one of the things that gives my style of what I do. It gives my, my artwork uh, a style of its own. Um, and it, when you're doing especially work like this in an anime style, sometimes it's really difficult to make that style your own. This is one of those things that I do that you can really see in one of my pictures. You see these colored hatching lines. And it's just something that stands out in my imagery and it makes my images pop pretty well, okay? So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a little bit here. We're gonna do a little bit over here like this. We're gonna do a little bit back here. I'm gonna actually put this pink in here to give this mouth a little bit more of a pink look. There we go. I'm gonna go inside the ear over here and a little bit over there. And I'm just gonna add that depth of color. Um, I might even do a little bit right through here. A little bit back here in his eye because that would be a shadow area. And then we're gonna pull back and we're gonna see, so you can kind of see what this looks like. Not in love with that, but it is what it is right now. So we're gonna pull back. Oh, I just darkened the screen, sorry. Let's pull back, kind of get an idea. You can see how that is really beginning to increase my depth. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do this for the whole picture, okay? So I'll come back to you guys in a little while when I have this guy done and then we're gonna talk about where I did that stuff and I'm gonna probably correct a little bit on this cheek. I'm not extremely happy with that, but you can fix that stuff. So I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna work on that. Um, I'm gonna go over what this is gonna look like or what how this is gonna look like when it's finished and, 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 and what I might do in the background and stuff like that. And then that'll be it. So hopefully that, that'll get you some, uh, some good technique stuff. All right. All right, guys, we're just finishing up the inking uh, aspect of this. Um, one of the things that I like to do at the end, I thought I'd save this for the last part, is I like to give a good weighted outline to separate different areas out, um, the layers, if you will. So I've got kind of a weighted outline. You can kind of see it going around the face right here and here. Um, I'll separate out with not as heavy a weight of an outline, but a little bit here. And I'm using that sign pen I was talking about to do that, okay? So that sign pen again is just writing in the channel and that's kind of uh, following that pencil line that I drew originally with the harder lead. And that's kind of it. I, I think I'm gonna call this guy done. Um, so you can see in these areas um, of the outfit, if you look closely, you can see the blue lines that I've added, the pink lines, and then I did do black in the gloves because they're white. Uh, but I've also got these streaky lines here. That's all with the flare pen, okay? So those are all flare pen lines that I'm using to get uh, what I need to get uh, accomplished there uh, with, my, with my drawing. So um, we'll call this guy finished, we'll do a little A little signature at the bottom, date at 21, and we'll see if this guy ends up getting sold at a, a show or not. So um, we're gonna cut back to me now, and, and we're just gonna talk through uh, what we got and any questions that you might have, and, and we'll see if I can answer stuff. So 
Uh, good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, until next time.